Hello friends, uh, we um, of GPET 17 covered uh, uh, the Chandrayaan 3's landing its uh, lander and orbiter softly on the surface of the moon on the dark side. In the process, we talked about Chandrayaan 1, Chandrayaan 2, Chandrayaan 3 also. Chandrayaan 2 is very much alive, the orbital is, and uh, the lander had uh, failed um, four years ago. And in 2008, Chandrayaan 1 was successful uh, and it dropped uh, a load um, on the surface of the moon successfully, but it was not a rover. Now, looking at this from the point of view of technology management and project management, uh, it's a feast for learning what technology management is there and what project management is there and what is the mastering of science on one hand and the technology related to it on the other. We also listed about a dozen companies which have been associated uh, with this project, uh, Bharat Heavy Electricals, for example, for batteries, and uh, uh, Walter Nagar uh, for his heavy machinery, uh, uh, Bhail, um, then uh, uh, l &T, uh, for various uh, sub-assemblies. Uh, so the most important perhaps is the robotic uh, apparatus, which is, which is both the lender and on, after that. The, we have received beautiful pictures put up by ISRO of how the lander has um, uh, released uh, the um, rover uh, softly at the rate of uh, one centimeter uh, per minute uh, and um, um, and how it has started uh, surveying the area. The life there is one lunar day. Now imagine such an expenditure in India, Indian context still quite large though lesser than what it costs the other countries, 600 crores plus minus and its net output in one sense is uh, one lunar days of survey on moon. Now, if you can't get that one moon, one, 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 one day because of the solar panels not working or sun is not there, uh, then in a sense you have lost this money. Of course, some learning in the science would have been there. So, the project management is extremely important. From almost the beginning, uh, ISRO has taken the approach of what is called mission management. So every launch is a mission. So it's not that the Chandrayaan series is a mission, but Chandrayaan 1 is a mission, Chandrayaan 2 is a mission. There is a mission control, there is a mission director or associate director, and uh, there is the director of the center then, and everybody has their job cut out according to that. Those who are monitoring, those who are controlling, those who are maneuvering, and so on. And ISRO is now known to be an organization which has become very good at that. This was, of course, picked up from the American uh, way of doing it when Mr. Robert McNamara was there. Um, from World Bank, he became um, Secretary of Defense and he introduced in the defense and in NASA also uh, this uh, idea of the mission management. So this is what distinguishes ISRO from other organizations in India. So now let's go step by step. Uh, 1962 or so, um, or even a year before that, a year before Mr. Nehru's death, um, the idea was germinated um, of space work. So at that time there was Atomic Energy Commission, which was also a kind of division of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. And further, child organization became Indian Space Research Organization. It needed to know about rockets, etc., and the only organization which knew about rockets, etc., was the Indian Ordnance Factories, which has a service called, or used to have a service called, Indian Ordnance Factories Service. So five persons were invited from there, and, uh, and they started doing work on rockets. Now, there are enough pictures, and we will also be linking it, where these uh, parts of the rockets are going on a bicycle, uh, in, in, in a location, uh, three Harikota, uh, on, on a rented piece of land. Uh, 
And uh, so Mr. Abdul Kalam also started working on it. And from there, he went to the DRDO uh, for the missile work because the basic thing is common. So Satellite Application Center, located at that time in Ahmedabad. Yeah. So, um, so, so these parts were uh, taken on um, bicycles and if they were bigger, <laughs> on a bullock cart. Uh, and uh, and in a uh, rented plot from where the experimentation would be done. Uh, Mr. Vikram Sarabhai, uh, an astrophysicist in the early phases, joined, uh, was invited actually to join Indian Space Research Organization. And uh, then uh, about 67 or so, there was a division set up called PAG, Program Analysis Group. Uh, which was uh, common to Atomic Energy Commission and um, ISRO, and it had uh, a number, all, all of them were actually IIM Ahmedabad uh, graduates in 69, 70, and 71 who joined it and uh, followed a system of uh, uh, program development and management as it is uh, done in the um, US uh, NASA. Uh, so, going further from there, the development started in Indianus. Except for you know, discussions with very senior rocket scientists like Von, Gron, uh, Von Braun, sorry, uh, uh, and uh, uh, training which they received at NASA or uh, the uh, Russian Space um, uh, Agency, uh, and uh, and from there, uh, then uh, there were experimental launch of um, small satellites, uh, small rockets, and the series developed and um, GSLV. PSLV, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicles, and then capacity to launch low Earth orbiting satellites or uh, uh, geosynchronous uh, satellites, um, communication satellites, remote sensing satellites, very small uh, satellites for education. And an experiment was conducted with the help of uh, US called ATS uh, satellites located somewhere on Africa. and. Um, and then uh, um, uh, the experiment was called SITE, Satellite Instructional Television Experiment, first of its kind. And so all the social science research was done in terms of what impact it had. Uh, then there was a DECU unit which was set up um, under the SAC, uh, Development and Educational Communication Unit. And uh, it launched uh, a project uh, uh, in um, uh, a tribal district uh, uh, called Jabua. Uh, which is part uh, Gujarat's part MP, uh, cutting across both states. Uh, very poor, very backward, and um, education programs were there, Panchayati Raj programs were there and all that. And the social science research, which was done almost autonomously, uh, showed that there was a very, very substantial impact. Similarly, site experiment was one of the earliest, if not the only one at that time, uh, in the education field, anywhere else in the world, established that satellite education, which has now become therefore online education. We don't care which satellite it comes from or doesn't come from, but you should be glad to know that they're all Indian satellites from which uh, these things are beamed. Uh, so also our internet and so on. So we are quite self-sufficient as far as satellite launching, satellite monitoring, satellite positioning uh, is um, uh, concerned and the fabrication also. This has generated a lot of enterprises which is what of, of interest. Now, briefly, in terms of people, uh, we are linking um, the major team, major part of the team, uh, which is um, uh, which has managed uh, uh, Chandrayaan-3. Uh, and uh, then uh, out of that, uh, the next person uh, who is coming as a mission director of Ganganyaan is a lady. So there are a number of ladies for which, again, we are linking separately. The ladies who have contributed uh, to the um, Chandrayaan-3 mission, and there are a very large number of them, um, very self-effacing. Uh, they are the best in the world, and uh, we're just glad that this organization has not only never uh, um, discriminated against, but has always encouraged ladies to join um, in its endeavors. Now, in this endeavors, for a moment, we, we take it and look at the economics of it, Comparative economics first, uh, Chandrayaan uh, uh, 2 cost us $100 million. Chandrayaan 3 has cost us $76 million because the orbiter of that is also being used. It is still there in the air 
uh, for airport two years monitoring various things, including satellites. You have seen the pictures taken by Chandrayaan 2 of the lander and the rover. Interesting. Uh, now, and during the last three odd months, um, uh, the whole thing was very hot. China has sent uh, two missions to um, the South Pole. Uh, both have not worked, unfortunately. Japan has sent, uh, Israel has sent, and now India has sent second time. So what is the cost uh, of uh, Japanese and the Chinese? Um, 200 million dollars each. Um, Israeli, 150 million dollars. India, you can say 100 million dollars or 76 million dollars, whatever you wish like. Let's say 100. So that means there is a difference of almost we can launch two of these vehicles or two of these projects with its respective outcomes compared to them. Or we can say that if we were doing it for them also, uh, then uh, the cost will be half. So, Japanese have approached ISRO to have a joint uh, mission uh, soon. Uh, ISRO itself has said that we will go for a Gaganyan uh, mission uh, starting uh, 2024 uh, and uh, uh, that will be a mission where um, first it will go to LEO, low Earth orbit, orbiting or low Earth orbit and then from there get boosted up uh, to the International um, Space Station uh, and, and so docking will take place. Uh, this is a project we have not done before. After we announced it yesterday, today SpaceX, uh, which is a private company, uh, corporate of the uh, Elon Musk, uh, but it is still called NASA's, uh, NASA's um, uh, SpaceX because it works from the NASA facilities like Kennedy Space Center, etc. Uh, they have launched it today. Uh, it's called Crew 7. There are seven crews there, including one South, Indi South Arabian, sorry, uh, yes, South Arabian uh, young lady. Uh, but they have all paid uh, money to SpaceX, uh, SpaceX to travel as a crew and then go and dock up uh, in the ISS. And I think they stay six months or something of that kind. Um, so, this is how competitive now this industry has become. Somebody has launched it last month, somebody has launched it next month. We've done this, we've done that. We've done. Why? Because it looks like that there is going to be uh, 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 an industry which comes out of it. Uh, and it is almost being, um, of course, they're being offered because Virgin Galactic Bronson, that is, uh, same person who had the Virgin uh, uh, Atlantic Airline, which, which uh, crashed in a sense, went um, belly up, uh, um, who are taking these uh, paid passengers to the space. So people are now laughing that for for the duration of two minutes in the spa airspace, it will cost so much. And then that cost, like any other service, will start coming down. And India will be the country which will bring that cost down uh, uh, to something like a couple of hundred dollars or something of that kind for a few minutes in the air. Uh, so, Partly laughingly, partly seriously, that space tourism is likely to develop. Because there will be always curious people that why don't we go and see our Mother Earth from top? How does it look? How does it look to be in the weightlessness? How do you manage? Etc. So it's a, it's a fun, it's a different thing. So now we're going, going, going next. Um, ISRO for quite some time was trying to be self reliant and doing things on its own and also putting that kind of secrecy band on it. Now those things have gone slowly. It is saying that, you know, we will get things done from the outside and they have started, as I said, about a dozen companies and now the startups. Now startups, there are few, including, including there is a school uh, which have made the satellites and um, um, they have put it up on the uh, rocket uh, of, uh, of, of ISRO. So among these capability sets, ISRO has demonstrated that in instrumentation, in robotics, uh, in monitoring, in remote sensing, uh, uh, it's very good. Now, what has been demonstrated in remote sensing here is when Chandrayaan 3 was able to can the place about 4 into 5 uh, kilometers, that means 20 square kilometers, where it should be possible to land. 
and it kept on, kept on, kept on remote sensing it, and then decided the, the space. Same thing they had done in Chandrayaan 1, which we call Jawahar Point now, where that uh, dummy load was uh, thrown. So, um, uh, so, so, so one can imagine, therefore, that while we have difficulty in saying that, you know, I will reach um, uh, at um, 7 o'clock when I start 6 o'clock from here, because we don't know what the traffic will be, uh, that uh, uh, ISRO can plan that uh, their uh, lander will land at 6.03 or 6.04 uh, p.m. Um, one and a half months later, uh, on that particular date of 23rd, just when Mr. Modi had finished his lecture on the plenary, in the, in the plenary session of BRICS in Johannesburg. Uh, plus, of course, there are other reasons of picking up that date and so on, because that area of about two weeks from then is available sun, otherwise it will become dark. Um, because this is the dark side of the moon, dark side of the moon. Um, so now hence what we are saying is that starting with being a part of Atomic Energy Commission, a uh, thing which is not set up, to Indian Space Research Organization, government funded, therefore government rules also, uh, to make it a very innovative organization in that context. And then generally not lose people also, though the salaries are far less than what they will be in NASA or European Space Agency or something like that. There's no project has failed because the manpower suddenly decided to leave or something like that. Now, this is a beauty. This is what we don't realize, that there are enough people. Now, also, we have to look at it in terms of technologies. We look at the chips, we look at the communication equipment, 5G, 6G, etc., etc. Number of people from Japan or earlier, or, or China, or Taiwan, or Korea, or India, or Pakistan, who go to USA or European countries for advanced studies. 98% of the others go back. 98% of the Indians and the Pakistanis stay there, right? For whatever reason now. Whether the lack of patriotism or it's just, you know, the difference is so much in terms of opportunities. Or, or the opportunities in India were not there at all. Uh, and so, um, uh, uh, but, but, organizations like ISRO and the Atomic Energy Commission have been able to retain their manpower. So there is something about the human resources management there. There is something about their project management which makes them successful where others have failed. It's not that the US has got less money or Europe has got less money or Japan has got less money or China has got less money. So therefore, it also gets proven that it is not really the money power which matters in these things or number of people you might have. It's also the coordination. So wonderful coordination. So there are lots of things to learn from this mission and then, of course, apply to the Gaganyan mission. Uh, there is a mission for Mars also. There is a mission uh, long time in the horizon of putting up a station at Moon and from there do the... Uh, um, uh, do the launches. Uh, so, with this, we will close this session. If there are more questions, we will take it up uh, in the next uh, session. Uh, this has remained general um, uh, to point out that uh, in technology also, and particularly so, uh, the role of uh, project management, the role of human resource management is very, very substantial. Thank you very much.